What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show, the show that we use technical analysis and intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. It is a weekly recap, and today I want to talk about just how violent bounces can occur in bear markets. And let me tell you, it was a wild trading week, and we have another wild. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully everyone's doing well this week and this weekend. So we're looking at a chart of the NASDAQ 100. And the reason why I want to show you this is just because of the eerie similarities that I'm seeing within the NASDAQ 100 now. Now, this is dating back to 2008. And I want to point out a couple of things. Okay, So here's 2008. We all know that the great financial crisis happened. And this was a lot of fear that came into the market right there. Pay attention to the date, 2008. That's where the year started. Okay, So there's some similarities that I want to point out that are... Like I said, very similar here. We had a 20% decline, okay? And that was from the beginning of the year to when? To March, March to April, right? Came right into around the middle of March, where we are right now. Today's March 12th, okay? So 20% down around the same time period. And if you look at the price pattern here, it's kind of this falling wedge, how price had kind of bounced from this area, list some relief, oh, another, another hit to the downside. And then we rolled over to have some significant move. And then actually, if you look right here, this was basically the middle of the month where we had a pretty large down day. And then the, the, the beginning of the week, we gapped down and put even more fear in the market, and then we took off. Uh, meanwhile, also we had some positive divergences there and in the MACD. So RSI and MACD had some positive divergences taking place. Now, why I'm pointing this out is because, well, what happened? Well, it did match that seasonality script where we ended up still coming far off already a 20% down hit to the downside. And this right here obviously made investors and other people feel a lot more confident. Okay, now that was a big move from, you know, from down here at 1675 all the way back up to 2050. Now, what happened after that, though? This. <laughs> Right, so we were looking right here. This was our window just a second ago. And then take a look how it actually came all the way back up, didn't quite meet your top, came back down, and then really is when the panic and fear started setting in. Are we in for something like this? You know, it's too hard to tell. It does seem like the market is shifting towards risk off even further and further as we've broken some key levels. But let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ 100 where it's at right now. Well, the NASDAQ 100, right? Pay attention to the date, right? The start of the year. Where are we at now? Minus 20%. Where? Well, right between the mid-month between March and April right here, we had the positive divergence on the RSI and the positive divergence there on the MACD. Is this going to play out just like 2008? I, you know, no, maybe, who knows, you know, it's too hard to determine. But like I said, the similarities are there. And the reason why I point this out, because people are going to always say, well, no, it's actually because we have geopolitical risk, we have this, we have that, and all these different similarities. But you know, what's not different is the emotions that go behind all of this and the psychology that investors have. That is what you should be paying attention to. Now, as we move into March and April, notice that that does match the seasonality script still. So coming into quarter end, we might have that markup. So you need to be well aware of that. Something that the market could do that would be, um, that would really throw people off if, if we get hit even harder to the downside. Okay, and if that takes place, that means the people that are still convinced that the market's gonna go long, that would be one, two, probably three waves down. That would shake a lot of people out. That would probably bring confidence to the bears. And then we start rallying, and then the bears might say, now it's the bottom. And then who knows what the case may be after that point. And then that would be the dirty move where it came down and then obviously did exactly what it did in 2008 and then take people out like that. And the market always does what you don't want it to do, to say the least. Now, if you know the quote, from Mark Twain, history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And you can see here, there is some rhythm within the markets that we are seeing. Get ready for more volatility. What do I mean? Well, next week, we have a jam-packed session of volatility type events. First and foremost, FOMC meeting. Markets pricing in a 0.25 BIP rate hike. Uh, possibility of no rate hike. I think if that were the case, you know, the market would rip. But the Fed's in between a rock and a hard place. It has to do something. And honestly, uh, the 0.25 right here, and we'll go into the risk ranges. To me, um, the market's already priced this in. So there, if 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 like a 0.5 comes, or a, you know, if, yeah, 0.5. BIP rate high comes that could exp uh, you know shock the markets a little bit I would imagine but a pretty positive it's going to be a 0.25 and then they're going to talk about QT pay attention to what they say about QT 
And when we go into the wrist ranges, you'll notice that it's not like much bigger than it was last week. So it kind of tells me that, you know, the market it has priced this in already. Now, this is just one event that's taking place. We also have PPI coming out. So be on the lookout for PPI. That's March 15th that that comes out. VIX expiration as well, March 15th. And then on top of all of that, we have quad witching too as well, which brings in a lot more volatility into the market. So yeah, if you want volatility, it's here coming into next week. Let's take a look at the risk ranges just to give a good idea as to where the market might kind of bounce around in. Now, we closed within the risk ranges last week. Once again, this week, we have an expansive you know, risk range, right? So 14.8, pretty similar to last week. Um, it is a lower uh, high and a lower low. So if we do hit the lower end, we'd be looking at around 405 on the SPY, which would be a pretty tremendous move to the downside. And that's where that, that scare would potentially come from. And if that happens... You know, that could happen early on in the week. We typically see these big moves early on in the week, but just pay, you know, pay close attention to, you know, these levels at 405 and to the upside is around 435 um, going into next week. Now, if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, we still have those higher highs, higher lows. I forgot to adjust the, um, this is risk range from last week. I forgot to adjust those, but that's totally fine. So just notice that we are still below a declining five day moving average. So we need to respect that trend as it stands right now, you can see here, it's kind of putting in this pennant. So it's this big expansion move and now it's contracting. So it does seem like we can get some pretty explosive moves. Be on the lookout for any sort of news to hit the tape too as well, because that can drive the markets all over the place. If we take a look at the queues, the queues got hit pretty darn hard. They closed on the lower end of the weekly risk range. You can see here from last week. Now this week, about the same size range. It's just under 340 and the lower end is 310. Right, we're still lower highs, lower lows at this particular point in time. The Qs are relatively the weakest here and been getting hit the hardest. And we're seeing a lot of growth stocks, um, you know, big tech stocks start to unwind, unwind a little bit here. So be very careful and on the lookout for big tech stocks to continue their descent, such as Apple, Google, Microsoft. Um, if that is the case, then we will see continued weakness here. Overall, big bearish day on Friday, scared a lot of investors. That could be a shakeout period. We will see, but it basically gapped up on some news events and then it completely reverses on itself the entire day, just kind of just bleeding and bleeding out. Um, we'll get into VIX, VIX here shortly because there was some interesting things that took place. Just be mindful, right? We still, this could very well be a wedge where we're just tightening up and then we might see an explosive move or short covering rally come into quad witching, right? As people have to reposition themselves um, you never know. We, right, there might be a lot of covering that takes place. If we take a look at the cues on the 15 minute time frame, 31058 is the lower risk range. I couldn't quite fit it on this chart, so it is lower. And then the upper range right there, just below that 340 marker. And we are still below that declining five day moving average. Let's continue on to the IWM. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting is the IWM has been holding up relatively well. Now, this last candle bearish engulfing candle. It can't get above that 20, uh, 20 day moving average, not looking too hot. The lower end of the risk range this week would be right where these previous lows were. So that would be a triple bottom if that were to take place. Now we talked about this on the 15 minute time frame. Oh, and by the way, yeah, upper edge is 205. So still big risk ranges overall, but we talked about the Wyckoff pattern that was forming here and it's still within play out. I, I would, I would think, and you never know, this could be uh, you know, originally a selling climax, and this could be a test, and then we might have a shakeout. That could be um, a potential possibility too. But as we stand, we're just really you know, relatively unchanged on the week. So there's not much going on right now, right? It's just a lot of room for volatility, a lot of swings back and forth. And when volatility is high, we need to be careful. Let's look at the weekly time frames just to give you a better idea into things. So first and foremost, SPY on the weekly time frame cannot get above that five-day moving average. It, it, that means the bears are in control on this weekly time frame. And then we have wind at our face on all our long positions, meaning that support is getting broken, resistance is holding at this particular point in time. And pay attention here. Look at it's been what we're in March. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten trading weeks of the year. And, you know, we're getting hit like we were basically in the pandemic, just up and down and up and down. But the pandemic was significantly easier because it was one, two, three, four weeks and it was done. So this is a lot longer process as we're seeing comparatively to the pandemic. So I got to be tactical here. Spy, when we zoom in, you can see that it is below all those key moving averages with the wind in the face and the RSI is still below that 50 pointing down. So be, be mindful of all of that. We did bid back up a little bit to around that 420 marker. Um, we'll see here if that can hold next week. Now, what's interesting is 
the SPY was down 2.8%. Meanwhile, the VIX was down as well on the week, 3.85 in percentage basis terms. And the VIX is basically just a measure of the market's expectation for the volatility of the next 30 days calculated from implied volatilities. Now, a lower reading basically states that the market's nice and calm, everything's fine, but um, as this goes higher, it remains uncertain. Now, overall, we are in uncertain times because, I mean, we haven't even crossed below 20 for multiple weeks now, so volatility has been trending higher, which means that there's a lot of uncertainty in this marketplace. Let's continue on to the cues on the weekly time frame. You can see a new closing low. We have wind at our face continually. Um, RSI is about to get into that overextended territory, right? This could be wedging here. We are unsure at this particular point in time. At some point there, I would imagine that we're going to see some sort of a rally, some sort of a relief bounce, some sort of short covering, but it could be very well short lived. Okay. So be mindful of that. It does not mean that we're just going to blast right up to here. I mean, there's always that possibility, but you know, I, I feel like there's still not enough fear out there in order for that to take place, but you know, um, Maybe, maybe there is. I, you know, it's 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 hard to determine that. The VXN. So not only was VIX volatility down, the S and P 500 down, but uh, Nasdaq volatility was down on the week. Pretty nasty looking shooting star type candle. Perhaps this offers up a potential for a move down, which ends up giving us some relief um, in the Nasdaq 100. And you can see that that was down slightly, but also the Nasdaq was down. So interesting stuff. IWM on the weekly time frame is below all those key moving averages, but this one's holding up a little bit better. PMO is getting below that zero marker, still wind at our face. And you can see here has a strong move down and you can see just looking at the closes of every week, it's kind of doing this arching pattern right here, which looks similar to like a dead cat bounce where we came down and we're dead catting, boom. And then we could potentially head lower. So as it stands right now, right, we have all that distribution above us. And now we're just kind of consolidating here. So this little box, Right? Are we going to come break out to come back into the middle of the pattern, or is this the start of breaking down? Well, it's yet to be determined. We looked at the 15-minute time frame. We looked at a couple key levels of what to watch for. Um, first and foremost, on the weekly time frame, we need to get back above that five-day moving average. So if we have a weekly close above there and we get back above this declining 10-week uh, moving average, that could be positive for the IWM. Meanwhile, although we were down on the week, well, welcome back. Okay, so we're looking at the sailor to shift ratio. This is a good buy and sell signal for Bitcoin. We are still on a sell signal at this particular point in time. We, you know, had that news event in Bitcoin and well, we got faded. So no change there for the week. We'll continue to monitor that. Bitcoin, as I said, right, that news event, watch out for our potential fade of that event. Well, it got faded. Now we're still holding that trend line. So, you know, this is an interesting thing because Bitcoin have, we've have seen Bitcoin, um, you know, have a tight correlation to high tech growth stocks. And it actually has been somewhat of a leading indicator at times. So if this starts breaking down this weekend, hey, perhaps that gives us an early indication of what next week might look like. Now, if this starts running up, that actually might give us an indication that we might have some relief also in um, NASDAQ 102 as well. But we are right there on that line and it is coiling up, right? So this is what we want. We want expansion to contraction. We wanted to get very tight and then it gives for a better risk to reward trade. Obviously the bulls wanted to go up, bears would want it to go down. Um, goes without saying, I guess, huh? Ethereum, Ethereum still holding up relatively well. Uh, it's still kind of below this trend line as it stands right now. If Bitcoin catches a bit, I would imagine this would just come right back in within the channel. I did notice that the moving averages, right, they were trending significantly, like pretty nice spread. Now they're starting to tighten up here. So this gives the opportunity for Ethereum to start, you know, moving back above, which would be nice. Um, but overall, relative strength between Ethereum and S&P 500 still remains relatively weak. So you know, we're on, we're, we're at a very interesting level moving into a high week of volatility. If we take a look at the sectors that make up the S&P 500, energy continues to lead the way. Consumer staples has been getting hit, kind of curling out. Utilities is finding more strength. So that might be one to focus on. Consumer discretionary and technology continue to be in that lagging quadrant. If you take a look at week to date performance, the only thing that was in the green was energy. Go figure. Um, and XLU, so it's more defensive. However, if you take a look at the bottom of the chart here, right? XLK, more risk on, XLP, more risk off, right? So defensive, offensive. So it's a very mixed board this week. Now, if we take a look at year-to-date performance, energy continues to be the leader and the only sector in the green right now. Utility holds that second spot, which is more defensive. Consumer staples year-to-date still is in that top four. So still seems like a more defensive posturing overall 
um, in the markets as it stands. Now, if we take a look at bonds, the TLT, right, there's going to be a lot of shakeup, a lot of movement here. A lot of people are saying if the Fed doesn't really rate, raise hikes or only does 0.25, the 10 year yield, the 30 year yield, they're going to start to go up. Other people believe that they're going to start coming down. Let's just take a look at what the chart says. TLT got hit this last week. So that could be um, the market pricing in already what's going to be taking place. And, you know, it's tightening up right here. So it, this could be very well a double bottom. I can see that uh, the case are going a little bit lower, but it is tightening up in this wedge pattern. So a pop up, right? There's about a $3.20 expected move. So that can take us to around 38 or to around this uh, area right here uh, coming into next week. I didn't draw out those lines specifically. If you take a look at the TNX, we had that fall off and then we started recovering up 16.24% closing at above 2% on the 10 year yield. So a big move in yields. And then another interesting one is the 30 year. Look at the 30 years back right up here at this level of resistance. Now we've seen what happens on these breakouts before on like the five year and then the 10 year, right? It broke out, came back, back test and started rocking it off. If the 30 year starts shooting up out of this too as well, I would expect further volatility in the markets and potentially a lot more downside to continue to just break down. Let's look at some bottom indicators now before we close this off. Okay, so first and foremost, spring bottom fish are starting to curl up here. Now, I like it when it gets below this minus 30 reading, okay? But when it gets below here and then it crosses back above this black line, it can be somewhat of a good indicator too as well. So for example, cross under and then here it started crossing back above, which is actually more around this area. It didn't give us that great of a signal. In these areas, it caught bottoms pretty well. So I don't put too much weight on this, but just notice that it is curling back up to try to get back above that minus 10. So it could indicate a short-term bottom. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ record high percent index this is below that uh, 20 reading. And when we cross back above and get through 35, it's marked some significant bottom. So the update on that as it stands right now, it is still below that minus 20. It still has a lot more time to go, which means that there could be very well more downside. If uh, the NASDAQ Cohen high low, when we get this 0 0.05 reading, that can mark a bottom. And it's done it you know, multiple times, um, catching bottoms of minus 24%, minus 83%, minus 55%, 20, 23, 32. This looks like it tagged it. It did not. It actually got a 0 0.06 reading and then started bouncing from that level. So we'll keep an eye on that one. The sell and buy signal that I like to use from the put to call ratio, it has had a little bit of an uptick. So it's at 0.97 right now. We need to see it cross below. 0.95. It is not there. So we'll continue to watch that one as well. And then the next indicator is the old full indicator. And I like to look at this for potential shifts as well in sentiment. We need the green line to cross above the blue line. When it does, that should give us um, an indication that we might see some either more sideways action or the market might start trending up. And it also acts as a good sell signal, as you can see right there, um, right here, it was choppy. Right here was more of a buy signal, boom, and started moving up. So good stuff overall. Keep in mind that next week, like I already stated, a lot of volatility in the markets. We are moving into a period of seasonality strength. There are catalysts at hand that could very well make this market move high and very quickly, but we need to be respectful of the trend because they could very well just be one of those rip facing rallies back to just heading down lower. All right, everybody have a wonderful day and I will see you back here next